Alright guys, so in this tutorial, what I want to do is I want to start talking to you about the camera. And I'm not talking about the camera on their device that they use to take pictures and post on Instagram. I'm talking about your game camera. Now, if you ever make a game and the entire map is bigger than the user's view, then you need to use a camera. What am I talking about? Well, you know when you played Pokemon, then the entire Pokemon world was huge. Well, you just didn't have the entire world on that little Game Boy screen. You only looked at a part of that world at a time. Same thing whenever you play like Super Mario Brothers. Mario could run left and right, but the entire map wasn't on the TV screen at one time. So in this example, here's what I did. I created an image, and this image is actually really huge. It's like, I think it's like 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. Obviously, whenever you're making games like this, you don't want the entire view or the entire map on the device at a time. You only want a little portion of it like this. And then of course the user can like scroll around, zoom in, zoom out, boom, good to go. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I already added it to my project actually, but if you go online just for this demo, um, find the biggest image that you can make sure that it's at least like 4,000 by 4,000 pixels that'll probably work the best but uh yeah that's what we're gonna be doing and again if you're like I wanna make a game but I know it's not gonna like be a RPG where the user is gonna be moving left and right you wanna use the camera in a lot of different instances as well so pay attention to this tutorial because it's gonna teach you guys a bunch of awesome stuff so what I'm actually going to do is in order to add the functionality or the user input that we need we're going to implement a class or interface called gesture listener now gesture listener is just like input listener except we can listen for gestures and I'll show you guys those gestures right now so just hold down control I and of course things like flings um, pinches, you know, all these things you can't do on a desktop. These are pretty much just events that the user can do that are specific to touch devices. And I am only worried about this one for this tutorial, this pan. So I'm going to cut it and stick it up right under my render. So again, a pan is essentially just panning around. So that's what I'm doing right here. So that's why we're going to be using that one. I thought it was pretty appropriate. All right. So now let's go ahead and set this project up. By the way, I don't even know if I, I think I mentioned this, but I already um, imported that image. Pretty sure I said that already. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get a reference to our camera. Now I probably should mention this. There are two different types of cameras that you can use orthographic is best for 2d and that's what we're making so if you're making a game like Pokemon Super Mario any like 2d style game um, that you kinda of think of the most simple ones most of the time you're gonna be using that there's also a perspective camera and this is a little bit weird we're not gonna be using it that much perspective you know like if you're standing in the middle of a long highway it kinda of looks like it's getting smaller as it gets toward the horizon it kinda of gives you that effect but uh, it's kinda of weird whenever we're just making games like this so again orthographic I know it has a weird name but just think of this like a normal camera so the next thing I wanna do is this private texture texture now remember whenever we use images in our games they're just textures at first and then we convert them to sprites pretty much a texture is just the raw image data and a sprite is just something that we can like move around and do cool stuff with so simple stuff and I'm just gonna name that map sprite because it's our only one now in crate we can actually set everything up now for the camera I'm gonna set this up first what we do is we say alright I'm a camera you want me to only show a certain area how big do you want that area to be for example do you want it to be I don't know maybe what is this like a hundred pixels by three hundred pixels do you want me to show a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels we pretty much give it the viewing area 
whenever we're setting it up. So we're just going to initialize this to new orthographic camera and what I want to do for the viewing area I'm just going to get the width and the height of whatever device I'm on. So for GDX graphics get width and the same thing GDX graphics get height. So now the viewing area of the camera is specific to whatever device that the user is using. Pretty cool way of setting it up. Now for the texture, just going to initialize this to new texture, GDX files, internal, and mine is called, I actually don't even know what it's called, worldmap.ping. All right, so now we just have to convert to a sprite. New sprite using this texture. So we now have a map that we can actually move around. Now, what I want to do is now that we have an object, in other words, the map itself, I want to position it. And at first, I'm just going to position it in the middle of the screen. Now remember, the origin of this is actually the bottom left corner. So if we were to take this and position it at zero, zero, then it would display, um, you know, only a quarter of it would display. So what we want to do is we want to account for that little issue. So whenever we take the sprite and we set the position, what we need to do is sprite get width over two and the same thing for height. So minus sprite get height over two. Now again, all this is going to do, it's just going to take the middle of the screen and it's going to move it down into the left by half the length and half the width. In other words, it's just going to center on the screen whenever you first open your app. Simple enough. Now the last thing we need to do, of course, just like input listener, we need to say that gesture listener, whenever a gesture occurs, to look in this class to handle those events. So GDX input set input processor to new gesture detector this. And let me tighten this up, clean it up. Actually, I might as well just bump all those together. Looks a little bit neater that way. All right, looking good, looking good. Now, before we go on, we just need to take that texture. This is an object that you actually need to dispose of. All right, so now that we have all of our objects set up, let's go ahead and render and actually draw this on the screen. Now, here's one little nuisance that I'm gonna tell you guys. Now, whenever you just use your batch to draw objects on the screen, by default, it's just gonna try to take all of the drawable and just plop them in the screen, fit them in there however it can by default. However, we are using a camera, and whenever we use this camera, essentially what we're saying is, don't just draw everything on the screen like this. You only want to draw a portion of these objects at a time. Let me scroll out a little bit if I can. So don't just draw like normal. Use this camera to determine exactly what area we actually want to display to the user. And it actually takes one extra line of code to set that, and that's batch set projection matrix to camera dot combined. So that's all that line of code does. And now inside batch is where we do our drawing sprite, which is actually the map itself. Draw using batch to speed it up. Now, if we just drew this on the screen right now, it would appear and then we could swipe our finger and nothing would happen because we didn't handle any user input or touch events right now. So in pan, what I want to do is this. Whenever the user is panning around, what these parameters delta x and delta y mean are essentially get the starting position and then get the ending position and give me the difference. So delta essentially just means the difference. So we can use this to move the image depending on how far they move their finger. So camera, translate, and 
to already include those. Delta X and Delta Y. Now, what we need to do is we actually need to put negative Delta X because stupid libgx and OpenGL, everything is flip-flopped around and it's just one of those weird things. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to move the camera, but we also need to call this method as well, camera dot update. And I know that uh, you think by, I don't know, just in real life, you move the camera and it's always looking at a new thing. You don't have to do anything else because, I don't know, that's just normal. But with game development, you actually need to update the view after you move it and that actually just changes the view. So now, let me go ahead and get my phone ready. All right, so check this out. Our map is now centered by default. I'm just gonna put my finger on there. Start dragging around. Looking sweet, this little world is looking cool. All right, not bad, not bad. Now we have a couple problems here. Look what happens when I scroll really far to the right. Of course, we don't want this. We don't want to allow the user to take the entire map and move it off the screen. So we have that problem to fix eventually. But other than that, I mean, this is looking good.